Hello, guys. Welcome to the show. This is what the world economy is like. It's like a rowboat that's three quarters full of water. Sure, it's still floating along, right? But the debt has saturated the system. The over leverage and the uh, over leveraging of the system, and also what the Fed is doing, draw, withdrawing liquidity out from underneath the underside is starting to deleverage the system. It's like a rowboat full of water. Sure, it's floating along and everything, but what happens when a big wave comes along? What we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about two enormous waves that are heading toward our rowboat of, a, of, of an economic system. And these two, nor, two enormous waves are going to hit about the same time, more or less. That's what it's starting to look like now. As trends forecasting, I see these things as developing trends within the economic system, and the two waves that are coming are a one-two punch. Italy, oh, I forgot to mention the third wave, which might be Deutsche Bank. So actually, it's Deutsche Bank, Italy, and also the, the hard exit from the British, uh, the British uh, uh, brick exit, okay? So we're going to talk about these things. Uh, let's see, uh, we're going to have to get the chart open, uh, so uh, let's uh, start up the charts. Let's open the charts right here. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the brick, the British brick exit. Just in the past few days, it's not conclusive yet, but it looks like they're going to have a no deal brick exit. That's what it's starting to look like. And certain corporations out there like Rolls Royce, they're stockpiling parts right now because it's really starting to look like a no-deal brick exit. That's what it's starting to look like, and, and they can see it coming. Uh, these auto manufacturers, they can see this coming, you know, uh, ahead of time, and they're stockpiling parts. It says, what should we be doing? We should be stockpiling food and stuff. I mean, these auto manufacturers are smart enough to stockpile parts. I mean... We should be putting some toilet paper away and other things that we might need. Uh, if they have a, a no-deal brick exit, uh, what are all the things that you might buy uh, in the store if you live in Great Britain right now? Uh, what are the things that you might buy that actually come from the European Union? Because, I mean, this thing's coming. It's coming fast. It's coming by spring. You know? It says Rolls-Royce will push ahead with, with its contingency plan for a no-deal brick exit. Despite the draft withdrawal deal agreed by the UK and EU negotiators Wednesday being a step in the right direction. Now, that that, that draft deal uh, is starting to look more and more like that's going to get thrown over. Uh, it, it ain't going to get there. In, in fact, uh, Theresa May is pushing for it. But... Uh, is it actually going to go through? Uh, here's the thing. There's an awful lot uh, that could go wrong. And it's starting to look more and more likely that it will go wrong. That's going to lead to a no-deal brick exit. That's what it's starting to point toward. Uh, so, so we got that going on. Now, if we switch over to Italy here, we see that there's a standoff between Italy and and the European Union, and this standoff continues. Now, this is a very integral situation, and I did a show on this not long ago, and I said that they were going to wrangle back and forth, and this wrangling could take weeks. But at the ultimate conclusion, at the end of all of this wrangling between Italy and the European Union, ultimately, I think Italy is going to... Uh, do what at least going to do because the politicians they have a certain mandate in there right now uh, Italy has suffered through years of austerity imposed on them by the European Union and the people are basically sick of it they're like we don't want this anymore right they voted this new government in in Italy because they wanted out of this austerity that's coming from the European Union uh, they want uh, a country that's free. They want a country where uh, where they're they're going to have a uh, 
no more austerity and so on. And that's why they voted the, this this uh, five star party. That's why they voted in uh, the elected officials that are in office right now. That's why. And these men that they voted into office are determined to follow the mandate by the people. So the people will love them. More and more, the people in Italy are going to hate the European Union and the boys in Brussels. And they're going to love their politicians for standing up for them and standing up for their rights against the boys in Brussels. So what are the boys in Brussels going to do? Well, it's very simple. They're going to throw gasoline on the Italian fire by, uh, well, let's read it here. It says, Brussels and Rome are in a constant back and forth over budget negotiations. But analysts told CNBC that it, the market matters the most. Uh, officials from the European Union and Italy have found themselves in a deadlock after former economic forecast shows the Italian economy will grow at a slower pace in the next two years than Rome thinks. The Italian government was quick to dismiss, blaming the EU for its inadequate and partial analysis of the country's spending plans. These comments came after Brussels said earlier in the day that Italy's 2019 deficit will reach 2.9% and not 2.4% as Rome insists. Both sides have clashed over Italy's 2019 budget plans after the anti-establishment government promised to increase spending, challenging the Europeans' physical rules. So the boys in Brussels, they're challenging. It's a direct challenge to the boys in Brussels. It says, on Friday, Italy's economic minister, Giovanni Tria, said Brussels' proposed deficit cuts would be suicide for the country's economy. So, so they're making their stands, and he's probably correct. The austerity that the EU has imposed on Italy for all these years is what's caused the problem. Now Italy wants to end the austerity to stop the problem, and what are they going to do? They're going to impose more austerity on them. It says the unyielding stance from Rome triggered a rise in the yield spread between German and Italian debt, a common measure for risk of European investors. Analysts told CNBC the standoff looks set to continue and that the EU is laying the ground open, a ground open in the process to, that could eventually lead to sanctions. So what is the EU going to do, the boys in Brussels? They are going to sanction Italy, ultimately, to try to bring, bring Italy back in line. And from what I hear, they're going to sanction them like 8 billion euros. They're going, to, they're going to impose a penalty on Italy of 8 billion euros of money that Italy already doesn't have. That's just going to make them more broke. What's that going to do? That's throwing gasoline on the fire. That's just making the situation worse. You know? It says, the big question in here, in front of investors, is how the markets will react to this noise. That just gets me. It gets me right there. They're, they're equating this to just noise. Well, I'll tell you what. This is going to be a noise. When Italy explodes, this is going to be a noise so bad, it's going to blow every window out for a thousand miles. It's going to shatter every window when the noise comes. It's going to be a Krakatoa type noise because I'm going to tell you Italy is not Greece Italy is from what I understand the third largest economy in the European Union I think it's Germany I think in England and I think Italy uh, I think that's the way it goes honest to gosh and 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 uh, I might be wrong about that don't take that as, uh, but I think it, it, I think it is the third largest economy in the European Union. It's not Greece. Greece is a tiny little, tiny little economy. They were able to smudge Greece over by smudging the, and f messing up the books and everything by fudging the books and fudging the numbers. They were able to continue and keep Greece going. Basically, Greece owes them ten billion dollars. They say, okay, here, Greece, here's a $10 billion loan. Now pay us that $10 billion back to make a repayment on your previous loan. That, and they've been keeping Greece going that way by giving Greece money that Greece gives them right back again. It's like they're shuffling. It's like they're like they're trying to trick everybody into thinking that Greece is is stable. 
<laughs> Greece is instable, but it's so small that they're able to. It's it's like if you're playing Monopoly, it's like Baltic Avenue, you know, the little one, the little sixty dollar one. Uh, it's not Park Place. It's not Boardwalk. It's it's, it's a little one on the board. That's Greece. But Italy, Italy's one of the ones that are way up further on the board, one of the more expensive properties, you know, if you're playing Monopoly. Uh, it's not Greece. So when this situation hits, it finally hits, after they're done shuffling back and forth, back and forth, eventually they're going to come to the conclusion that there's no solve in Italy. And then it's not the markets are not going to react like it's just a little bit of noise, like he says here, uh, the the big question in front of investors is how the markets will react to this noise. The markets haven't really reacted yet to it at all. And the reason why is at this point, at this stage in the game, yes, it is noise. But this is going to come back to haunt the markets in a big way, in a huge way. This alone could bring the entire system down because the system is structurally unsta unstable to begin with. So we got these two huge problems coming up in the very near future. Uh, I see them as huge hurdles that the system has to get past. Uh, the big question here is how long will Italy uh, uh, barter back and forth with the EU, the boys in Brussels, uh, before finally this whole thing congeals into a huge crisis? And also uh, the timing. I mean, it's starting to look now like that timing for Italy to congeal into a huge crisis is going to be somewhere in around the same time that the brick exit has a hard exit from the European Union. It looks like the two are, are, are trying to come together smack like that. Okay? Uh, so the Fed continues on pulling $50 billion a month from the economy. That's like pouring more water in our rowboat that's already ready to sink. You know what I mean? And then we get this wave coming from Europe. I don't know, boys. I don't think we're going to get by any of this. I think that this whole thing, by 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 middle of next summer, we're going to be looking at a, a, a totally different financial system than we're looking at right now. Uh, that's what I think. Thank you guys for listening. Like and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next show. Bye-bye, guys.